Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dare to Game. Today we're doing our very first ever Throwback Thursdays gaming video. This is going to be a new series that I start. Obviously it's going to air every Thursday and it's going to be covering an older game, preferably one that's five or more years old and I'd like it to fit within my specific interests. So medieval, medieval fantasy, RPGs, that sort of stuff. Uh, so if you have suggestions, always feel free to leave them in the comment section below. This one, of course, is going to kick off a series for Lord of the Rings War in the North, North a video game that uh, I think is a great hidden gem and is vastly underappreciated, most of which coming from the fact that it came out right around the same time as Skyrim, which of course overshadowed it in many ways. This game being a little dated for the time, it not being open world, it's more of a linear story-based game, and of course being a Lord of the Rings game, making it a niche interest in the first place. I don't know why, because the Lord of the Rings is the greatest uh, IP ever made, and everyone should be a fan of it. But uh, we're going to be playing through. I'm on heroic difficulty, which means it's the second time through. That was one of the things I really liked about this game. It basically had a new game plus and a new game plus plus. So you play through in regular. Once you get through that, you can play through in heroic. And once you get through that, you play through in legendary. And it's fun. It, it just it gets more fun each time. There are three characters to choose from. You could be Andril, who is basically, she's a lore master, which basically is kind of like a weak wizard. She also can use a sword or whatever. I, I'm not a fan of her. I've played as her once or whatever, but she's she's a decent support character. So if you want to play split screen, which I think it's yeah, it's it's definitely split screen. Which you I don't know if you can do that. I assume you can do that here on on PC, which is where I'm playing it. I know you can also do live multiplayer if the servers are still up. Uh, but if you play split screen, she makes a good support character. So if uh, you want to play split screen it's great to have either Farron or Aerodan as one and then Andriel is another so you can you know she she makes a great support character anyway then you have Aerodan who is a Dunedain Ranger focuses mostly on ranged I guess uh, he's pretty well balanced he does decent damage I don't usually play as him I play as Farron most times he's definitely my favorite character and he's who I'll be playing through here so let's just get right into it with uh, the gameplay as Farron of the great war of the ring Many songs have been sung, and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone, and his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth, had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Eredan. Well met. And in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at Sarn Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at Sarn Ford was attacked by nine black riders. We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally, a man of great malice and power. Now. As 
As our master commanded, I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once, and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. If this Agandaur has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I... I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Fornost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You can find no better allies than the sons of Elrond half elven I hope we meet. But with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. Alright, so that's quite enough exposition. So let's take a look around Bree. In games like this, you can almost be certain there's stuff to do. And as someone who's played the game before, I, I know of some of the things to do. So let's start here. This, this one, if I remember correctly, is pretty fun. What have we here? A stranger in town. A stranger's just what I'm looking for. Interested in a little harmless pastime? It's time to make some money from it. Pastime? What sort of pastime? Why, nothing more than a simple game of riddles is all. I love a good game of riddles. But everyone in town has already heard all I know. I reckon I could stump you. You said something about money. It's simple. You stake some money and I ask you a riddle. If you give the right answer quick enough, I'll double your money. If you're wrong, the coins go to me. What do you say? Hmm. All right. Ask your riddle. First, you have to put up your money. How much do you care to wager? Remember, you stand to double it if your wits are quick enough. Well, go big or go home. Um, that's a good deal of money. But nobody gets the better of old Tedder Hedria when it comes to riddles. It's a wager. Now, remember, you'll have to answer quick. I won't give you forever with that kind of money at stake. Are you ready? Yes, let me hear your riddle. What belongs to you that others use more than you do? Mm. Your name. Oh, right you are. You're a smart one. Give me a chance to win it back, eh? What do you say to double or nothing on another try? Double or nothing it is. Let's hear it. The more you have of it, the less you see. What is it? Darkness? Oh, correct. You have a cunning mind, no mistake. Go again, double or nothing? Once more, then. What is it that's so fragile, even saying its name can break it? Silence. That's the answer. I've been too easy on you, it seems. Go double or nothing and I'll stomp you this time. Once more, then. The more of these you take, the more you leave behind. What are they? Footsteps. Oh, right by thunder. I can't get anything by you. Give me one last chance. Double or nothing once again. Once more, then. Always running, never walking. Often murmuring, never talking. Has a bed, but never sleeps. Has a mouth, but never eats. Too what easy. That's River. Ah, uh, I see I'm dealing with a riddle master. More the fool I for putting up my hard-earned coins. Well, fair is fair. Here's your winnings. Much appreciated. You should think twice before you riddle with a dwarf again. <laughs> Farewell, friend. Well, I was right. I did remember that being fun. I always worry when I go into riddle things that I'm not going to know the answers, but in this game they were pretty easy. I think this guy has a mission for us, too. 
Welcome to Bree. You're a stranger around here. May I ask you a few questions? What sort of questions? We hear a lot of talk from travelers these days. Most of them speak of war and of a growing shadow in the east. The townsfolk just dismiss this, say it's far away and doesn't concern us. But I'm not so sure. You've traveled, maybe seen a few things. What's your opinion? Should we be worried? I'd say there is good cause to worry. I was afraid of that. If only I could convince others. But until then, I will have to take action on my own. What do you intend to do? I'd like to arrange for arming the town. We'll need more than pitchforks if we're forced to defend ourselves. I tried to convince a dwarven merchant to bring us weapons, but he refused. Maybe I should talk to him, dwarf to dwarf. It's worth a try. His name is Groff. He's selling his wares from a market stall down the street. You might still find him there. I'll let you know what he has to say. Easy enough. Uh, as you can see, this game is pretty standard for the time and the style of game. It follows a pretty predictable path. You know, you find characters, they have missions. You go here, go here, go here, and do this thing. Uh, and it, this game's fun. It does have many missable things, and all of the missions here in Bree are missable. You can leave without doing a single one of these. But uh, seeing as it's not that long of a game, I, I like to do everything. Hello there. Always good to deal with my own kind. The name's Groff, and I hail from the Blue Mountains. I don't think I've seen you before. Farin, at your service. My home is in Erebor, far to the east. Erebor? A lonely mountain? Then you're one of King Dane's folk. I hear good things about your people's stonework, and their wealth. Some of my kin once dwelt in your homeland. What can you tell me of it? The Blue Mountains are prosperous enough, although we find more iron than gold. We rely on iron working for our livelihood. That's why I'm here selling tools to the Breelanders. Picks and shovels are fine, but what about weapons? You make those as well. Of course. We make arms and armor as fine as any in Middle-earth. Good. I'd like you to bring some of them to Bree. These people have need of weapons. <laughs> You're pulling my beard. Weapons for these folk? They wouldn't know which end of the sword to hang on to. I might as well try selling shoes to hobbits. Peace never lasts forever. These people need to be prepared. Well now, if you're so eager to arm the Breelanders, how come you don't get your own folk to do it? I would, but Erebor is too far away. There are people here who see the danger growing. They want to be prepared. It'll take more than a few sensible folk to make it worth my time. These people are simple and peace-loving. It's plowshares they want, not swords. So they're not warriors. Is that any reason not to give them a fighting chance if trouble comes their way? Hmm. You're right, of course. Maybe it's not such a bad idea after all. At least I'd have no competition. All right, I'll do it. Excellent. How long do you think it will take? Some time, I'm afraid. It's a long trek to the Blue Mountains and back. Not to mention I'll have to convince my kin I've not lost my mind. Probably three months or more, I reckon. I will let them know when to expect you. Safe travels, Groff. That seems fair enough. I like how they subtly give you hints about how long things take in this, you know, how the time, the events, you know, how long they take, so it helps you put it into perspective exactly about how it lines up with the War of the Ring and, you know, the story that we know so far from the movies and books. Did you speak with Groff? What did he say? Will he bring us weapons? I changed his mind. He'll bring you weapons soon. Excellent. My only concern now is the time it will take. What if we need to defend the town before the dwarf made goods arrive? Maybe you could help me with that as well. How so? I can tell by your gear that you are no stranger to a fight. If you should have occasion to, well, let's say, recover any weapons you don't need, bring them to me and I will pay you for them. I'll bear that in mind. Farewell. What have we got here? There's a little ball. <laughs> Who could live in a town where it's always raining? 
It's depressing. Also, logistically, it would be a, a nightmare. These guys are kind of creepy looking. You're a strong man, Bramble. You do well with us. Sounds good, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to hurt no one. Not real bad, anyway. You think they care about you? I say take what you want and the rest be damned. Well, what do you want, Dwarf? This is a private conversation. Why don't you tell me what you are discussing? I don't see how that's any of your affair. Clear off. I was just curious. Sounded a bit suspicious to me. You mind your own business, eh? Those who go sticking their nose in where it doesn't belong are likely to get it cut off. Sounds like a threat to me, Brelander. Oh, he isn't a Brelander. He comes from down south. He just showed up a week or two ago. Gone. Fools who can't keep their mouth shut are no use to us, Bramble. He just called you a fool, Harley. Doesn't sound like a friend to me. I don't like being called names. I've had enough of being called fool by folks around here. Small wonder it is, Sue. Stay here with the rest of them, then. But things will be changing around here. You mark my words. Nothing good will come from that one. What did he want? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. He said there'd be changes around here soon, and those smart enough to join up with his friends would end up running things. He's up to no good. Don't listen to him, or his kind. Aye, you're right. Folks here may not treat me the way I like all the time, but it's still my town. I shouldn't go siding with strangers. You've got the right of it. Farewell for now. Now let's go see what kind of armor and weapons we can get. I'm going to start with weapons, since I think I might run out of money quickly. I didn't really remember how expensive things are in the new game plus in here, but I guess it makes sense. Welcome. What can I do for you? So we'll start with we'll start with weapons. So what's the best? I, I prefer two-handed weapons. So what do we got here? 164, 230, 2133. Hmm. Wonder why I can't use these ones. Like I said, requires 27 strength. Huh. Well, I guess this is the best axe I can get. Oh, it's only one-handed. So I can't get any of these. Well, I guess I'm going with a one-handed axe. That's that's new for me. Uh, interesting. It won't let me scroll down, but clearly there's more items on here. Anyway, need a crossbow too. What have we got? Mm, seems to be the only one. Ah, uh, chest armor. Two fifty-five, one sixty-two, two thirty, one ninety. So that's the one. Get a helmet. I don't like these ones, so I'm not even going to look at them, even though the stats are really good. I guess I'll get this one. I don't like that style of helmet. I avoid it in the game, so. Uh, hand armor. 101, 12, 61. Hey, 101 it is. Uh, what did I need? Shoulder? 70, 57, 38. Pants. 54, 55, 73. And boots. 66, 80, 59, 66, 70, 16, 86. Alright, that should be everything. Get everything all put on. Oh, look at that little axe. Oops. Ah, tiny little axe. Hopefully I'll find a nice one right away in Fornost. Well, so, I've spent most of my money. <laughs> it's just like a little hatchet. That's hilarious. I spent most of my money, but now I have a suit of armor, a crossbow, and an axe. So, let's get moving on to Fornost. This is Fornost, yet I see no sign of the enemy. These ruins could hide a large army. We might even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. Well, we came to provide a distraction for Aragorn, and what better way to do that than walking in the front door? Let's be about it. 
Look at my tiny little axe. Let's see how well it works against these guys. As you can see, it's got a very simplistic hack and slash style combat system. Hmm, that was an interesting way to kill someone. Poking them with the blunt part of the axe. But in any case, easy to learn, easy to master. The way games used to be, like this, linear style, hack and slash. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I miss the majority of games being like this, but I don't mind the experience. I think as, if it's handled well, it can still be very entertaining. They just have to put a lot of work into the story. And that's the thing about this game, I think they did. The story of it is entertaining and unique. Taking care of them, let's look around for a couple more things. Hmm, those didn't have anything in them. Let's over here. One of the things about this game is it's classic in the sense that you gotta look for things in your surroundings. That's how you find stuff, you make money, all that jazz. Well, let's level up. We're gonna put these into strength, considering that was the stat that was preventing me from using any of uh, those weapons that I wanted. And mm, perk tree. What do we got over here? More Krylos Dwarf to ignore heavier hit reactions and also increases the armor of nearby party members. While blocking, press 2 to stun your target. Ooh. Hmm. I guess we'll do that one. But with all that in mind, I feel like that's where I'm going to stop today's video. So join us next Thursday for the continuation of this exciting series. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you liked the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.